Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Devin Rex for Art here. Today I'm going to be playing with some laser prints um, that were sent to me by PM Artist Studios. There's their information. And they sent me a couple of sets to try. Um, so it's a similar technique to doing magazine transfers, which I have a video about. Uh, I'll link that in the description uh, below. Um, so I I don't have a laser printer, so they um, I've never hadn't tried this before. So they asked if they could send me some laser prints to try, and I said sure, do it. So we're gonna play with that today. So they sent me a couple of packages. Uh, this one is going already, and that's a sample of the papers. So I'll just um, go through them. Uh, I think they sent me a few duplicates of some of them. Some really cool patterns, and I've been um, thinking of different ways to use them. Here's another set, a little alien, which is one of my favorite subjects. So this one has some cool um, scripting and some shapes, some patterns. And I could see layering these, so we're gonna try to layer some of these together. There's another one they sent me a few of, which I don't know which pack that's in, but if you check their website, I'm sure it um, says on there. So I've been doing a bit of experimenting um, because even though it's similar to magazine uh, image transfers, I haven't really done it with laser prints, so I did a bit of practicing. And um, if you use a transparent paint, you can still see the image um, after, so this is this is the laser copy um, that I used to put down on the plate. So this is the paint over top of that. So this isn't the transfer, this is the original with some paint overlying. And you can see, you can get some interesting effects uh, just by you know um, using different paint on there. If you use a transparent paint or you know a, not an opaque paint, you can still use that original print to for something else. Um, if you use a dark color, like if I used a black, I wouldn't be able to see the image anymore. If I used an opaque white or opaque color, um, I wouldn't be able to use this, this original that I used to make the print. You'll see in a minute. So we're going to play with that. Um, the first thing I'll just do just a straight up, um, transfer. Let's do, let's try this one here. This feels very, um, Asian wavy to me. So I'm gonna actually use blue to do this one. And it's a um, brilliant blue. So just like a magazine image transfer, you just spread your paint. Uh, you want a good layer. You don't want it too thick. because what's gonna happen is the ink on the laser print is going to resist picking up the paint and it should stay on the plate. So we're gonna put that down, give it a rub. Okay, I'll do a little check. So here we see the pattern has transferred to the jelly plate. I can still use this um, print for something else because I can still see the pattern on there. So that's cool. So we're colorizing the prints and we're also using them to make additional prints. So I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll pick it up. Okay, so that's dry. I'm gonna pick it up with some gold paint. Um, this is just a cheapo brand, Montmart. I get that from HomeSense. And just gonna keep this layer simple and then I'm gonna add on top of it after I pull it. So for the pickup print, you want the paint um, thin enough that you can see the um, pattern underneath it. So it's a bit thick here, so I'm gonna just take some of that off. I'm just pulling lightly so that's pretty good. I'm going to pick it up just on some copy paper. I'll give it a good rub. I'm going to use my little uh, flat lid here. Get those edges down. So 
So um, you might be thinking, well, why don't I just photocopy that first print in blue and, you know, then I have the same thing, but not really. So when you do a transfer, you get kind of like a distressed, grungy uh, result. It's just a fun way to play with images. So there we have our first pull. And I could have gone a little bit uh, thicker with the gold paint there. I think I took a bit too much off. But um, that's the fun about mono printing is that you end up with surprises. So I'd like, I think it would look nicer with the gold even all the way across, but I don't mind that it's not. Like it just adds something unique to it. And you can see how the, the print that I get, it's not an exact replica of this. It's sort of distressed. All right, so I have to think I'm gonna layer on top of this. So once this is dry, I'm gonna do use this to pick up. And I thought it might be cool to use um, this little alien, it looks like a bridge. I thought it would be kind of cool to go with the water theme. It's like a little bridge. And then I thought this scripting would look neat, superimposed on top as well. So I'm gonna use those together. And I want a dark color. I think I'm gonna go with like black. So here's our Mars black. So I'm gonna do a similar process. And if I'm fast, I am, once I pick up these layers, I could, if the paint's still wet enough, I can just put this directly on that. That's what I'm gonna hope for. Um, it's a bit humid today, so I might get away with it. If I feel like the black paint is drying, I may have to change my plan and then use, um, and wait for it to dry and then pick it up with maybe uh, something clear. All right, so a thin layer of black. I thought about maybe doing like an ombre, like different colors, but then I thought we already have blue and gold here and I didn't want too many competing colors. So I gotta work a bit fast. So I think that's thin enough, let's try it. So I'm gonna put this at the bottom. this on the top. Let's go like that so that we still have some usable portions. So this is the transfer step. Let's give it a bit of a rub rub. So that's cool. It's kind of grungy on the edges. I don't mind that. And it's still, I hope it's still wet enough. We're just gonna go for it and try to transfer that directly to our first print. Um, as I discussed in my magazine transfer image, I don't always have success going directly because it's very dry where I live. If you live in a humid environment where the paint takes longer to dry, um, this I think would be a little bit easier. You'd have a little bit more leeway. So that's pretty good. I think I'm just gonna get that just a little bit. Cause I didn't pull all the way off. I can put it back down and it stays in place. I'm gonna give that a little bit more time to suck up all the paint that's on there. So with the jelly plate, really your imagination is um, your guide. I mean, you can try whatever you can imagine. So you see here, we got a bit more of that paint, just giving it more time to dry. So that's our print. So that's kind of cool. So you can see how we uh, layered the different laser images. And again, this, we can't really use it. There is a subtle tone on tone. So I could maybe see using that as a background. It would be very subtle. Um, I can still use these pieces. Like that almost looks like a mountain to me. 
So we could kind of use that as a start of another piece. Why don't we do that? Let's cut it this way. I'm just gonna cut it. Oops. I'm gonna cut it. Ah! I'm gonna cut it straight across. And I'll put that in my drawer of painty papers and that might become a background for something in the future. And these we can use back on the jelly plate. So I think that would kind of look cool. This could be like a mountain. This could be just some writing, something we can use in the middle. So this is not going to transfer, but I'm cutting it in that shape so that we have like, like a white outline. With jelly plane, you kind of have to think backwards almost. And again, like that too is a subtle tone on tone that I could maybe use in the future in a collage. So kind of like we could add it back to this if we wanted. Anyways, lots of lots of possibilities. So let's use a let's use bronze. I don't think I've ever used gold as the first step in a transfer, so this will be an interesting experiment. I still have a little bit of black paint on my brayer apparently. Going to be a distressed bronze, and that's with jelly plating. You just gotta go with the flow. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down first. A little mountain. Put this down next. My sky. And put this in the middle. Apparently I had some on my hands. Let's give that a rub. So when I sat down, I didn't have like exact plan of what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna just kind of, I had some ideas. We're just gonna play with those ideas. Just very, very lightly transferred. I can still use that in something. And that I could use in something. So we're kind of making, you know, prints, but we're making background pieces. Now you can't really see that what's left on the plate there you can kind of see it there it's very subtle so I'm going to use um what should I use to pick it up so we're going to wait for that to dry once it's dry I think I'm going to use this typing paper to pick it up it's um I was looking for onion skin paper this isn't quite onion skin it's not that thin but it's a really nice thin weight so I'm going to use that for our pickup might get a little wrinkly, but that's okay. Now I could use um, beige to pick it up. That would be kind of cool. Or I could actually use black and you would see the um, gold over top. New idea. I'm gonna use uh, pan pastel to colorize the mountain. So I'm back. So I'm gonna use, um, I think some purple on here. So the pan pastel, um, I don't know if you've seen in my other videos. It's a dry medium. It's highly pigmented. Um, as a substitute, you could use um, makeup. So we're gonna just make this mountain purple. And I'm thinking maybe we do like a pink edge to it.
All right, that's the base. And we don't, that's already dry. We don't have to wait for that to dry. I'm just gonna move that. Maybe we do black, an ombre, black to magenta. So um, I need to add paint to the back of the pan pastel to pick it up. It won't just magically pop onto the plate. And I think that's too much paint. That's okay. So I'm going to start on the magenta side here. And then now I'm going to go to the black. And we'll mix them in the middle. Lightly rolling over to pick up some of that excess. Put, I think, too much there. But you know what? Oh, smudged it there a bit. That's okay. I wanted it nice and even. I just need to go a bit slower. All right. Good enough. So let's see what that looks like. So my hope is that the gold or bronze is going to really... Um, highlight so the thing with the thinner papers like this uh, typing paper is it will wrinkle and i'm just trying to press it fully so that it um, picks up all the paint i suspect we might have some white wrinkles in there though that's okay I'm just gonna let that, I can really feel the moisture through that. So I'm gonna let that sit for a bit. So there we go. So the black kind of overtook the purple on the bottom. You can't really see, and maybe I should have used a lighter color near the bottom. Whoops, the edges are wet. But you can see the bronze on there. So I don't think this is a standalone print. It definitely could add something to that, but it's a good base. Hopefully you can see that. It's interesting. Uh, I have to note that even though the pan pastel didn't fully pick up, that gold did, even though it was the first layer. I can't really explain that, but I think that's kind of neat. Let's just use a white, just to clean off the plate. Do a quick little pickup over here. Still had some black paint on the edges. Oh, I'm really messy today. I'm usually not this, not this messy. Let's see. tissue on top. A few minutes later, let's pull this up. And this is more of a clean off uh, print. So it's interesting. I still find it interesting how the gold came off on the other layer, even though there was still some of the pan pastel left behind. And there's still some left on there. I'm just going to clean that off with a bit of baby oil, which um, I've shown that in some of my other videos where I use pan pastel on the jelly plate. I just take a little baby wipe. Just a little bit left on there. See how pigmented that those pan pastels are? So even though the, um, the last print I did with the mountain wasn't what I envisioned in my head, like it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Um, I'm still happy with it. Like you have to be willing to take what the jelly plate gives you. You know, you can plan and hope. Um, and I think it's important to try to think logically about the steps you're doing. Like, 
whether you're using opaque paint or transparent paint, what you're putting down first on the deli plate, you do think about those things. Uh, but sometimes they don't, you know, doesn't all work to plan. So here's a review of the prints we did today. I had lots of fun playing with the uh, laser prints sent to me by PM Artist Studios. Check them out. So I was happy with this print. I quite like it. This one, I would have maybe chose different colors. Uh, it's very subtle, so if you like subtle, then maybe you like that. I did continue to play, and I've got another video that I'm working on editing to show you some other fun things and some discoveries that are new to me. I don't know if they'll be new to other people, but stay tuned for that video. That should come um, pretty soon. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share all those youtube -y things, and uh, keep your eye out for part two of Playing with Laser Prints. Bye now.